A man took my mute sister into the bathroom against her will, and when I found out, I took it into my own hands to get the most brutal revenge imaginable. Here's what unfortunately happened. My little sister, Holly, is a mute. She can actually whisper a little, but it takes a lot of effort on her part. She's been mute ever since she was five years old when she lost her ability to speak in an accident. She's very smart, and she's a good-looking kid. At the time of these events, she was 16 years old and I was 21. Me and my sister live together in an apartment because my mother is a roamer who isn't well suited to take care of teenagers. She has our twin kid siblings, but not my sister and I. My dad is distant from the family, so helping my sister through high school falls to me. I work at a car parts shipping company, so I get paid just enough to get by. Because of our relatively poor living situation and my sister's inability to speak, she gets bullied at school. Generally, it isn't much of a problem, but in the few months leading up to these events, she was having increased problems with it. At the time, Holly was 16 years old, but she was a sophomore in high school due to failing a year in middle school. She refuses to take special ed courses now because they didn't help her at all. But because she's good looking and is older than most of her class, she gets attention from juniors and seniors. It's mostly negative attention, but there was one guy who I'll refer to as Dio from now on. He's the villain of this story who treats her really nicely. He's a senior and at this time he is 18 years old. He repels bullies from her because he's tall, he's handsome, he's a tough guy, and bullies don't want to mess with him. I don't interfere with them because my sister is visibly happy when she comes home from school and whenever she's around him. I didn't let them hang out alone together, but supervised them hanging out a few times before. Anyways, King Crimson a few months, and she stops coming home happy. She isn't hanging out with him anymore either, although I ask her multiple times, she won't tell me anything about it. I confront him about it, and he evades the topic. At this point, I'm suspicious, but I don't know what to be suspicious of. So this is where the research begins. I'm getting more and more worried about Holly, so I go to her counselor and assistant principal to ask about her activities at school. From what I learned, she still spends all of her free times near Dio at school. I find this strange since she doesn't seem happy anymore. This is where the illegal stuff starts. A few days later, I invite Holly and Dio on a dinner night to Olive Garden. No one can resist Olive Garden. While we're there, I do two things that are completely illegal. Number one, I steal his phone, which I've seen the password to. And number two, I read his texts and emails. Anything I can to find out what's been happening between them. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I do find out that he does drink and smoke herb with his friends on the weekends. This will be relevant later. A few days later, I find his phone in the laundry and say it must have ended up in one of our coats on accident. I know for a fact he got it back because he called me to thank me for having Holly return it. I still didn't have what I was looking for, so I went back to school and used his previous texts as grounds to check the CCTV for any suspicious activity. There wasn't anything suspicious by school standards, but there was something that caught my eye. It was my sister going to the central bathroom in the school and him going to the boys' room of the same bathroom about a minute later. The bathrooms are separated by a wall, but there's a janitorial closet that opens into both bathrooms and is completely in the blind zone of anyone walking into the bathrooms, let alone the CCTV cameras. At this point, I began to suspect that something was happening between them in the bathroom. It was the only only one with a closet like that and if my memory served me, the closet didn't have a proper lock. It just locked from the outside on both sides. This is when the boiling point begins. Now that I suspected something, I confronted Holly about it. She broke down crying and after 15 minutes of consoling her, she shakily signed to me something that made my blood boil. Apparently, it was far worse than I expected. I thought they were going in there and doing substances or something since Dio was the kind of guy who would pull that type of thing. But as it turns out, according to Holly, he brought her in there one day and what happened to her was unspeakable. He told her that he would know if she told anyone and he would hurt her if she did because she physically could not scream for help or make any kind of loud noise for that matter. He got away with it. And the worst part is he was threatening her into meeting him there every couple of days and doing that to her. I was livid. My first instinct was to call the police but I realized there would be no evidence except the testimony of a mute girl. I wouldn't be satisfied with the police intervention anyway. The first thing I did was call Holly in for a week from school. A family emergency, I told them, can get her out of school for a week with excused absences easily. The next thing I did was find out where he lived, and after that, I planned the most brutal revenge I could think of. My first step was to break into his house. It turns out his parents go out a lot, and he leaves to smoke and drink with his friends. I knew from reading his text that there was a spare 
spare key on top of the porch light in the backyard. That Saturday, I scoped out the place and waited for everyone to leave. I then began phase one of my revenge. I went into his house through the back door, found his room, and I smashed his PC. I stole his wallet. I pissed on his bed. Then I poorly hid two small bags of herb in his house. I have a friend who grows. Finally, to hide the fact that it was targeted, I tossed up the rest of the house but didn't take anything. I then went to a Starbucks and used the Wi-Fi and Dio's debit card. He didn't have a credit card to purchase a bunch of dirty toys in his name and send them to his house. I then left his wallet sitting near a homeless man sleeping on the park bench. Next, I contacted his parents and I told them I had seen their son drinking and smoking with a group of teenagers. They were furious, which leads me to believe that wasn't the first time something like that happened. Finally, I went to the back road. He walked on his way home from his parties, which I had found out in a text from one of his friends. I waited for two hours in some bushes for him to walk by and then wearing sunglasses and a hoodie, I jumped him. I demanded his money and phone, although I knew he didn't have his wallet. I kept one hand in my hoodie pocket, pointing it at him like I had a piece on me, which he believed. He handed over his phone and ran away. I then finished up my plan by using his phone, which I still had the password to, to send an email to the school from his school email confessing to what he had done to my sister in the janitorial closet multiple times, as well as possessing substances on school grounds and getting sloshed while he was underage. Then I snapped his phone on my knee and went home. Here's the aftermath of what happened. My sister went back to school the following Monday armed with a can of mace that I bought her. Dio wasn't at school and she was called in by her counselor. She confessed and he was charged to the fullest extent for what he did to her and his illegal possession of substances. On top of that, his parents completely disowned him and he was expelled from the school. Sadly, this story doesn't have a completely happy ending. This whole ordeal sent Holly into a downward spiral. Her grades fell behind and she barely smiled. In March of 2018, she attempted to hurt herself and it was by pure luck that I found her in time. She's getting better now, but the emotional trauma will probably affect her for the rest of her life. I pray to whatever cruel gods are out there that he gets a taste of his own medicine in prison. This story is beyond awful. There's not even a way to describe how terrible this is. And no amount of revenge the OP took on this guy will ever undo the horror that was done to his sister. I mean, this guy is 18 years old. So like they said here, he actually was tried as an adult. It sounds like he got in trouble for this. He got in trouble for that. He lost his freedom. He lost a lot of other stuff, but none of that will ever make it so his sister doesn't have to deal with that for the rest of her life. How does someone deal with something like that? I think this is one of those times when somebody's sharing a story like this that is that intense and terrible might end up helping someone who has been in a situation like that and is trying to deal with them themselves. With something as serious as this, what would you actually do if you found out your loved one who couldn't defend themselves was in a situation like this? Am I the jerk for evicting my sister and her daughters after they hid my wife's wig and embarrassed her? First off, I want to start by mentioning that my wife is a cancer patient. She unfortunately started losing her hair due to chemotherapy and she's been incredibly insecure about it, her lack of hair in particular. She got a wig and started wearing it. I don't mind it. I 100% support her since she only wears it around family and friends. My sister lost her apartment after a messy divorce and moved in with her twin daughters almost a month ago. Things have been going well except my niece's constant remarks about my wife's wig. They got so hung up on it and kept asking a lot of questions about it. They asked to take turns to try it on, suggesting they straighten it with a hair straightener and so on, which was exhausting. They even pressured to see her without it, but my wife was uncomfortable and refused. Yesterday, I got home and I found my wife had locked herself in the bedroom and was crying. I asked what happened and she told me she woke up and she couldn't find her wig. Then discovered my nieces took it and hid it, then urged her to come out so they could see her without it. My wife repeatedly asked them to give it back, but they started laughing and recording. My wife had to lock the door to keep a distance because they didn't stop. I was fuming. I went into the kitchen and I confronted them. They acted confused, but I was able to get the wig back. I lashed out at them, telling them they humiliated my wife and embarrassed her by taking away her wig. They said it was just a lighthearted prank, which made me go off on them. My sister got involved and said my wife was just being too sensitive. The girls were also just curious to see her without a wig, but she overreacted. I told her 
Her and her daughters were recording her. She saw nothing wrong in it and said I overreacted as well. I lost it on her too and told her she and my nieces are no longer welcome to stay in my home and they needed to leave. I later let them know about the eviction since they thought that I wasn't serious and they started crying, begging that I let it go. But my wife is no longer comfortable around them after what they did. My sister called our elderly dad and he begged that I let them stay and insisted that my nieces were just acting like typical teenagers. He offered to speak to my wife, but I declined. They've been begging that I change my mind, but I keep refusing. So am I the jerk? What a weird, sadistic way to gain enjoyment by humiliating the OP's wife. Maybe these two girls don't care at all about the suffering or the life or death of this woman, but I'm sure they would feel a lot differently if it was somebody that they did care about. If it was their mom, for example, they probably wouldn't have this heartlessness to try and bait her to come out so that they could record her. The fact that the sister and the elderly dad don't see how wrong this is makes it seem like they really don't understand this situation entirely or just completely lack the empathy to care enough to understand how wrong it was. The two daughters are basically just little bullies that are doing whatever they want and nobody's stopping them and this was the final point where they took it all the way. So if this was your loved one and somebody did this to them, let me know what you would do down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for getting mad at my husband because he laughed when I told him to reheat his own dinner? For context, I'm a stay-at-home mother with two kids, a three-year-old and a six-month-old. My husband is an ambulance driver. He works odd hours and comes home unexpectedly. He expects dinner or lunch ready whenever he gets home, whether I'm sleeping or busy with the kids. It's exhausting, but I do it because I know how hard he works. After struggling with this for a long time, my mom suggested I start pre-making meals so that dinner or lunch can be ready when he's home and all he's got to do is just reheat it. I immediately got to it and went grocery shopping and spent an entire two days making meals and storing them in the fridge. His response to this idea was whatever. I was sort of relieved because now I could sleep properly, the kids won't get interrupted, etc. Well at 11 p.m. last night, he comes home while I'm sleeping after putting the baby to sleep. I wake up to him shouting at me from the living room. I rush out and ask what's happening and he tells me he's hungry and he wants dinner. I tell him it's in the fridge, he just needs to reheat it and he didn't have to wake me up for it. He tells me I need to go in there and reheat it for him. I say no, not happening. And he needs to reheat his own dinner. He starts laughing sarcastically, which got me mad. And then he tells me that I'm ridiculous to assume that after working nonstop for an entire shift, that he should be expected to do a chore, aka reheat the dinner himself, when I'm here and I can do it. I start arguing with him after he complains I'm not doing enough and refuse to heat it. Then I go back inside the bedroom and shut the door. He comes an hour later yelling about how I've basically made him almost pass out from hunger just because I'm petty trying to prove a point. I tell him he's being unreasonable to expect me to reheat his dinner when he could do it himself. He gives me a nasty look and then he tells me he's going to bed hungry and that I'm responsible for this and then he heads out. This morning, he silently gets dressed and leaves while turning his phone off. Was I the jerk? I'm guessing this is one of the situations like we've seen before where the husband is probably not enjoying this job too much. It's probably very stressful and he's building resentment about having to do this job, whereas he sees the wife is getting to live this life of leisure, hanging out with the kids, raising them, and doing things that he thinks he would want to do. And that resentment probably leads to the idea that the least she could do is to heat my food. The least she could do is X. The least she could do is Y. To him, he probably feels like it's so obvious he doesn't even need to say it, but to her, she's not just doing nothing. She's raising kids. And that alone is probably already messing with her sleep, but then having to wake up in the middle of the night to reheat food is making the situation way harder. It seems like the solution she came up with is a good one, but coming from his perspective of that's the least she could do, he's taking out his frustration on the whole situation on her. One of the top comments said, it's not about food. This is about control and it's about respect. This is not something you're going to be able to handle on your own. You and your husband need neutral professional assistance to navigate this discussion. The behavior your husband is demonstrating is absolutely atrocious, disrespectful, and unloving. What is your dynamic that he feels it's acceptable to be yelling where he could wake up the children? And why does he feel it's acceptable to yell from a different room to wake you up. This is the behavior of a child, not a full-grown adult, nor a respectful adult. If everything you said is true, then I have to ask, why are you in this relationship? He's yelling from another room and throwing a hissy fit to wake everybody up in the house and get more attention. Then he's punishing himself and won't eat in the name of being angry with you. I do not recommend trying to have these conversations with him because you are both going to lose it. But if this is going to be a long-term permanent relationship for you, you need help because this type of behavior does not improve on its own. And there is a lot of support on this 
this response because that is pretty much what this seems like from the perspective that we're shown here. I can't possibly see how this would solve itself, but how do you see it? What would you do if you were in this situation? Let me know down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for not returning to my childcare job because the mother fired me over a mistake? I'm a 19 year old male and I had a job taking care of two kids, a two year old boy and a three year old girl, a dog and doing lighthouse work for four days a week for a single mom who got my contact information from a business card I had posted in my dad's pediatric therapy office. Ever since the weather started getting warmer, the dog has been shedding like crazy. Like I would vacuum the couch and the next day it would look like I hadn't. I would lightly tug on the dog's hair and pull out huge tufts. The dog has been scratching all the time, etc. My dad's dog has a double coat like theirs and one morning when I was leaving for work, I packed his brushing tool in my bag. When the kids were napping, I spent a full hour outside brushing the dog. The dog seemed to enjoy being brushed and after an hour, there was a huge pile of hair that had been brushed out. Before I vacuumed it up, I sent the mom what I thought would be a funny text saying, I brushed a whole new dog out of the dog's coat. Looking back, I realized that maybe I should have asked first, but at the time, it seemed like something that was within the scope of caring for the dog. The mom went ballistic. She called me yelling, saying that by brushing the dog and not letting the hair fall out on its own, I'm causing harm to the dog. She said I was an idiot and she cannot believe she trusted me with her kids and that today was my last day. I was extremely upset because I had been with the family for three months and she has never yelled at me like that before. I left as soon as she got home because she was still fuming. I immediately lined up a job with another family and I'm supposed to start on Monday. The mom who yelled at me called me two days later saying she was sorry about the quote misunderstanding and that firing me was an overreaction. I told her I was no longer available and she started crying about how hard it was to find a new sitter for her special needs kids. Her kids are autistic and have therapy in my dad's office. When I stood firm, she started texting my dad and asking him to do something. My dad is annoyed at being dragged into this and while he respects my decision, he wishes I would keep watching her kids for a short time to keep the peace. I hate that I put anyone in an awkward position, but I also don't want to work for someone like that. Am I the jerk? Yes, he shouldn't have done that to the dog without talking with her first, but the way she acted was totally overboard. It's weird that the dad would ask the kid to keep being a part of the situation when he probably explained to the dad that he was straight up yelled at. But let me know what you would do if you're in this situation and jerk or not a jerk and why.